Okay, Mr. Sizemore, um, I know that you play the mandolin. Can you tell me when the first time it was that you picked up an instrument? Uh, it was about 1942. I was seven years old, and I started playing guitar. And uh, my brother sent home a mandolin. He was in uh, the armed forces, and uh, he, people were getting shipped out all the time, and somebody gave him a mandolin, and he sent it home, and I started playing the mandolin, 1942. And when's the first time you did a live performance? Oh, I was probably... I started right away playing at square dances, uh, just playing chords. I couldn't play the melody. But um, I, to really, you know, play per se, I was probably about 12, I guess, uh, when I started playing on radio and things like that. Did you ever, the first time you ever performed in front of a live audience, how did you feel? Were you like real comfortable or were you nervous? Oh no, I was real nervous. I was a country boy and real shy and backward and it just, I was so nervous it almost made me sick. <laughs> but uh, I soon got over that when I got paid a little. That helped, that helped the nerves. And where exactly was it that you were born and raised? I was born in Sheffield, Alabama, there in Carver County, and uh, when I was about five years old, four years old, my family moved out in the county, out in the country, and uh, we lived out in the country there until I was uh, about 19, and uh, I married and I moved back into Sheffield and lived there then for a good while. Okay. And if you had to say um, one of your biggest idols that plays and performs living or dead, who would that be? Well, naturally the first person I've seen play a mandolin that could really play. I'd seen people play just a couple of people that could play just a little of the old, old style. But the first uh, anyways near bluegrass I ever seen was Monroe, uh, Bill Monroe, and I seen him in 42 on the Opry. And uh, of course that, you know, that just set me on fire. That's, I knew then that's what I wanted to do. That's awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to tell anybody that has a dream of um, doing what you do? Just work, work, work. Uh, you're not going to get up some morning and uh, pick up the instrument and just start playing it like you've been doing it all your life. It takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of desire. And that's that's all I, I would just eat up with desire to do it. And uh, I spent many, many hours, I tell anybody, I spent many hours practicing because back at the time that I was growing up, Nobody, there was no self-helps around then, you know, except just chord books, and most of that was jazz and bar chords, things like that. Uh, nothing for bluegrass, no four-note uh, chords, you know. So uh, I just had to hunt all that stuff out, and it was a long, drawn-out process uh, until I got to a, kind of an intermediate level, and once I got there, then it started coming you know, faster then. But I always sought out somebody better than me to play with. That's, I would give any young person that advice. Have you been inspired by doing this CD? Well, you have to get somewhat inspired, you know, to do any music you do. Uh, it's, uh, if you're not, it's just a flat dead feeling. And you always feed off of the people around you you know, you work off of them. And uh, it's, uh, it's always good to, to play with other musicians. I've played so long, I can sit down and play solos by myself. You know, I don't have any problem with the timing or anything, but uh, it's always good to feed off of the other musicians. 
So you've enjoyed it? And, oh, yes, and I've enjoyed it. We've had a good camaraderie among all the guys here. Well, I know you sounded good in there. Well, I was thank you. out here listening, and I was very touched by the way you play. Well, I've been recording for many years, and I just released a new CD of my own. I've got out uh, some other stuff, but I just released a new CD in uh, July, I believe it was, and uh, about the middle of July. And uh, it's a solo project, uh, of course, and I had uh, Jimmy Haley on guitar, Terry Balkum on banjo, Ron Sheard on fiddle, Alan Bobby is a great friend on mandolin, playing harmony parts and then playing lead guitar. And uh, Mike Bubb, uh, formerly of the Dale McCurry band, playing uh, bass. And uh, they, uh, the guys just really did an outstanding job as always. Now, what's the name of that CD? Uh, Be Natural. Be Natural. Yeah, and that was kind of taken from Monroe. He would never refer to doing a tune in the key of B. It was always to him, B natural. Uh, I've heard him say it so many times, and I wrote a tune in B, and I thought, well, that's just a natural B tune, and one thing led to another. I thought, well, that I just named the project B natural and the tune also. So that's the way that came about. Well, that sounds fantastic. I know that Bill Monroe was an inspiration to a lot of people. And yeah, I play a totally different style to what Bill played, but uh, a lot of the things that he did, the um, basics of, you know, the basics of the music, uh, I took from him, Flat and Scruggs, and, uh, you know, that was my starting point. And I tell all young people, Pick out J.D. Crow, Doyle Lawson, whoever you want that plays, you know, from the older style, myself, whoever, and uh, learn the basics. Then do whatever you can on your own, you know. But you you got to have that home plate to go back to. Yeah. And because of you and so many other artists that feel that way, y'all are keeping the tradition alive. Yes, if you don't, you know, if you don't remember where you came from, uh, there's no chance of ever going back. Very well said. Thank you so much, Mr. Sizemore. It's a pleasure. And I really, really enjoyed meeting you. Thank you. Thank you.